I'm John Skinner, and this supports my online summer flounder fishing course at saltstrong.com skinner. I'll have links to all of the gear in the description of the video, and I'll also have a link on a video on how to tie the rig. Okay, in a few minutes we're going to get to this guy, and I'm going to explain why I shouldn't be holding it in my hand. Uh, but first, let's get to the fluke fishing. All right, you know what? This is a day that they're describing as the hottest day uh, in my area in three years. It's supposed to go into the low 90s, which I realize in some parts of the country is like an everyday occurrence. But for us, it's really, really hot. So I'm trying to escape the heat, and the best way I can think to do that is to bay wade, just wade up to my waist and cast along the sandbars, islands, and so forth. And uh, right across uh, that stretch of land there is a barrier island on the other side of the ocean. So I'll have cool ocean water around, probably around 68, 70 degrees flowing in. And we'll hopefully uh, keep it bearable today. I've never actually fished this particular spot. It's always looked good to me. I've gone up on Google Earth. You can see I've got a little bit of an edge to the right there. You can see it's a little bit darker. I've got water flowing left to right. As I walked out, I saw plenty of bait. Uh, so this all looks really good to me. Um, but you know what? I've got a fallback plan. If it doesn't work, I've got another spot nearby that um, I've caught fish on before. But uh, yeah, you know, you go up on Google Earth, you look for the edges and so forth. And being that this is close to an inlet, I know it's going to get current flow. Uh, th this looks great. It's like, uh, how can it not work? And you probably don't see it yet because it's still early, but this is a very busy bay. It's nuts. This is a bay that I do not kayak fish on a weekend. This is a weekend, and with it being so hot, there's going to be lots of boats out. To me, this is the safest, most comfortable way to do it. Uh, I'm just going to island hop, bar hop, uh, and I'm using my kayak to do that to get from place to place. Uh, I see Robin already, but... Uh, didn't hook him up. Uh, so, you know, I've been on this spot now for, oh, about 20 minutes or so. I still do not have a fluke. Um, felt the tap there, was glad to, to feel one on the other end, and it's just tiny. So I spent a little bit more time here and decided, all right, you know, it, it looked good for whatever reason it's not producing. So uh, I decided to go ahead and make a move. So my next stop is this little tiny sandbar, and that's going to be good enough for me to put my kayak up uh, high and dry. I'll put out an anchor. Uh, I'm actually going to have like two lines to that anchor. I don't want to turn around and see that thing floating away, but uh, and it's not just a little kayak anchor either. It's like a, an eight pounder. So I'll um, secure the kayak there and then do some wading. Yeah, definitely uh, nice to feel a fluke on the other end uh, after spending maybe 30 minutes in that other spot. And then I cast it about five minutes here. So uh, definitely took me a little longer than usual to get going. But you know what? Sometimes you have to try new spots, and that's what I was doing. So it just didn't pan out. Oh, nice one, too. Look at this. Okay, the legal limit is 19 inches. This one's close for sure. Um, I'm not keeping any fish today. I was fishing Montauk the previous day with my friends, and uh, I've got some nice fillets in the fridge. So I'm just fishing for fun today. I'm definitely not going to keep anything. So seeing bait fish around, knowing that there's some sand eels in the area, I've got that bottom jig tipped with a nemesis, and I also have a nemesis, uh, gulp nemesis on the top hook, and I really like the sand eels, except I'm trying to get some extra distance here, and the sand eel cuts into my casting distance a little more than the nemesis does, so I'm going to use that, use the nemesis, try to get a little extra casting distance. Um, this is really kind of a flat area here. Um, you know, you wade out, you don't gain a lot of depth, so uh, I kind of need the casting distance a little bit here, and more so than in other places where I might be near a channel. Yeah, this is definitely a flat as uh, opposed to 
uh, a previous video that I'd shown waiting where I was working a channel edge. Yeah, and here's the first sea robin of the day caught. Um, yeah, they're not too bad this particular season. Uh, the bays were inundated the previous season with these, but, but they're still a pest, but um, and when their numbers are not too outrageous, certainly you can deal with them. And I would say this trip, I certainly caught a lot more fluke than uh, sea robins, so yeah, it, it's not too bad. Not a bad one. Maybe I got something going now. Oh. <laughs> oh, come on. How many times you can hit that thing? That fish came off twice. It's not a bad one. Look at this. That's a keep. Holy smokes. That's a nice one. Wow. Damn. Big. Wow, that's a beauty. Okay, that definitely exceeds my size expectations for this trip. Uh, I didn't expect to get any this big, so yeah, uh, I'm real happy about that. So you probably notice a lot of green weed drifting by and it's starting to get bad. Um, I'm having to pick it off my cast, like you know, every cast or so. It, it doesn't seem to be as bad on the end of the cast, so it seems like I am able to productively uh, work that zone out there before it gets fouled. But yeah, right now it's bad. However, you know, this is not unusual. This is the beginning of incoming water. And usually this green weed is more of an outgoing problem. Uh, but what happens is you've got outgoing water and it pushes the weed out and then as soon as that current turns around and come back in, well, some of that weed comes back in with it. But what usually happens is on the later half of incoming current, it's usually all flushed through by then and you've got clearer water. And uh, yeah, so I'm, I'm just going to stick it out here. I mean, hey, I'm still catching, um, you know, just fighting through it. So I'm deciding I'm going to try the, the sand eel. I seem to be reaching the fish pretty well, so I want to make a few casts with the sand eel and um, see how I do with that. It is very effective. It's just kind of soft. Uh, the nemesis actually holds up better than the sand eel does, but uh, it, it, the sand eel is very effective.
No way. So I definitely felt snagged, but there's nothing out there to snag. Um, and then it turned into a fish. Oh, I've never caught one of these in my life. I've been fishing for over 50 years uh, and I've never even seen one of these. I've only seen pictures. It's a northern stargazer and um, yep there was some stuff I needed to learn about this stargazer as in um, it's got a venomous spine on the top. I, well, I was careful not to touch the top. Um, I was lucky not to touch the top of its head by its eyes well that can give you an electric shock um, so yeah there's an electric shock from both by the eyes and those spines of venomous um, yeah uh, well I've learned so um, yep if you ever happen to catch one um, don't do what I just did don't handle it like that uh, figure out a way to release it without handling it I was lucky um, I was lucky but then I also you know tried to avoid the spine because if you know I always try to avoid the spine but yeah I wouldn't have known about the electric stuff near the eyes uh, so wow what a bizarre looking fish that was and uh, so that's cool you know all these years I've been fishing and I've never caught or, or seen one so yeah it's always something new when you're fishing now from what I've read it's not like that's gonna kill you um, but it, it could be quite painful, either the electric shock or the venom. Uh, you don't want to deal with either one of those, but uh, it's not something that's going to kill you. Although one article I read said 50 volts, and uh, yeah, that could do some damage. So uh, yeah, just, just if you get one, don't handle it. Be careful with it. So already there is a little bit less weed, and there's still some weed there, but it's not like the big sheets and clumps that were coming through earlier, so it is starting to thin out. So that's just something to keep in mind if uh, you know, the weed is bothering you. Think about what the stage of the tide is. Typically, the higher end of incoming uh, will have the clearest water. Oh, how big are these sea robins? This could be my personal best sea robin. The few I caught, there were just some giants, so yeah, that was quite the specimen. Uh, I caught actually three on three casts, and they splashed some water up on my camera, so um, it'll just be for this one fish, and then I'll uh, clean that lens, and it will be nice and clear again. Yeah, this was interesting. Uh, you know, I'm straining for distance here, and, and this guy's drifting well within my casting distance. Um, but I just waited, let him go by, so I wouldn't get into his lines or anything. He's got a couple lines out. Um, you know what? Uh, one thing I haven't mentioned is a lot of times the hits when you're doing this, they'll they'll just feel like slack. You know, the fish hits and they're coming at you. You feel that when you're casting. If you feel slack, just set the hook. 
and you'll be surprised, you know, because you go from slack to boom, you, you're going to have a bent rod. The other thing is, uh, you've got to keep cranking. Uh, I find it much easier to lose a fish casting like this than straight up and down when you're in a boat or a kayak and you're vertical jigging, you're reeling those fish straight up. Uh, yeah, they stay on. But um, you've really got to keep constant pressure on them in this kind of situation when you're pulling them at you. So that was a real tiny one, but you know what, I, I leave that on the, the video because it's just a great thing to see. You know, we really need to see a good uh, variation in size. Uh, yeah, it's a good thing for the future. So uh, hopefully these stocks will be protected. Sometimes it's it's hard to say. But uh, anyway, it's good to see little ones. Uh, you know, we're never going to have big ones if we don't have little ones. So it's good to see that. So this turned out to be an awesome way to beat the heat. To be honest with you, when that sun was under cl a cloud, uh, I actually felt a little bit chilly. So I never felt hot at all. And uh, I had a breeze on my back, taking the kayak back to the ramp. Um, so it was a great day. Caught a lot of fish. Uh, had a couple of good ones. Got that stargazer. So that was a first. So yep, beautiful way to spend a, a really hot nasty day so all right i hope you enjoyed this video if you like these videos please subscribe to my channel and don't forget to check out my online fluke fishing course